Um, hey guys and welcome to Diabetic 365 and uh, today we have Chris um, to share all of his diabetes experiences. Um, he has been type 1 diabetic so um, he is going to share all the uh, ups and downs for the past couple of years. So uh, welcome. Hi Chris, how are you? How's it going? So uh, finally got you. So um, Chris, tell us what was when were you first diagnosed and your um, your story uh, when was it and what was your initial reaction and about your parents and all that stuff so I was diagnosed my freshman year of college in 2002 I went to school in Virginia Tech and um, looking back on it obviously I had all the classic symptoms going to the bathroom a lot losing a lot of weight um, drinking a lot and I was going through um, I'm sure if, I'm sure you could probably go through like a Walmart or something and find like the powdered Gatorade the, the powdered Gatorade mix I go through two or three of those before noon, just, I mean, because at the time I was working out, so I thought that, you know, you got to you know, refuel your electrolytes and all that other nonsense, but um, looking back on it, that was just me just trying to, you know, replenish everything, but it was just going right through my system. Um, so my parents, when they came down for Parents Weekend, this was in uh, late September, they were like, you really don't look very well, you should probably go to a doctor, but of course I was very stubborn about my health, so whenever I went home for my high school's homecoming, um, I actually went to the doctor and they said, you know, you should probably, you know, pee in this cup and got some issues here. And eventually, next thing you know, I'm lying in the hospital bed. You got type one diabetes. So um, it, it was obviously a shock. I mean, most of, most of the time, these diagnosis stories are. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I've obviously I've, I've made the best of it as, as well as I can. But um, it was kind of interesting just because I had that weekend to kind of get acclimated with it and have my parents get acclimated, and then I had to go right back to school. I only missed one day of class. So it was just kind of, you know, learn as much as you can to get things going, but then the actual education process was really more of a learn as you go. There wasn't, I mean, I've never actually seen a CBE yet, and through all my years, it's, you know, 2011, it's almost been 10 years, I haven't seen a CBE yet. It's just kind of what I've been able to do to keep things consistent, and then once I found the online community, I've learned some things and realized where I've been kind of, not necessarily going wrong, but where I could have been doing things better. But, um, yeah, a lot of it's just been trial by fire. Uh, I mean, I read from your blog post that uh, you kind of were a little skeptical, also you were in denial regarding your diabetes at the beginning. I, I think that it was just more of a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on a routine. That's usually where I thrive, just in life. And the fact that my routine was kind of thrown out of whack with the diagnosis, that was pretty difficult. And then... Um, at least early on, once you, I mean, once I was initially diagnosed, I knew that it was a very serious disease and I had to take it seriously. So it was like the first two years, I was great. And my A1Cs were fine, but that's also part because my pancreas is still doing a little bit here and there. But, um, you know, I, I think I just kind of thought that, you know, all of a sudden, like two years, okay, this, I didn't know what I'm doing, turn everything into cruise control. Um, and then it, it slowly things started to slack off. My final year of college, I wasn't really testing that often, if at all. I, mean, I was still taking insulin injections, but it was just everything was very blind. And looking back on it, it was very foolish. But I mean, luckily, you know, things kind of worked out for the better. But I mean, between that last year of college and my first year of like professional work, when I was traveling a lot on the road, I really was not taking very good care of my diabetes. Granted, my diet and other things didn't help, but I wasn't doing the best that I could with the tools that were at, that were at my disposal. And I'm, I'm not sure if denial is the best word, but I just was kind of ignoring it. Like, I knew it was there. I wasn't trying to just say, oh, no, my diabetes is going to go away. I just figured, uh, as I mentioned, cruise control was probably the best word for it. And it was cruise control going 85 instead of driving the speed limit. And that's really where where things, well, I don't want to say that they went wrong, but my A1C was at a pretty high number where, before I started to turn things around. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it, it was probably best described as cruise control at a dangerous speed. So, uh, also, I think now you're on insulin pump and you love your Dex Dexcom. Um, as I'm, actually, I'm actually, I've yet to go on an insulin pump. I'm, I've been on, I did the syringes for the first you know, six months or something like that, and then I, I switched over to insulin pens, and I've been on pens ever since. So, almost the entire diagnosis, or my entire diabetes life, I've been on insulin pens. I've, I've had plenty of opportunity to see what pumps can do, and they definitely have their advantages, but as far as my diabetes management is concerned, it's, it's not broken yet. And I don't really feel like I need to have that extra change, and I've been able to, to you know, bolus and do corrections appropriately. I've, I've found a happy medium with the Lantus, so I really have no need for, or really no need to investigate um, the possibility of a pump right now. So, I mean, as far as the insulin itself goes, I'm on the pens. But you did mention the Dexcom. Dexcom's fantastic, especially considering the things that I 
uh, that I thought I knew, but that I didn't know. Like those first six months on Dexcom were completely, it was an eye-opening experience. I'm sure I mean, you've talked with a bunch of people that, that are on the Dexcom, and I'm sure they probably have a similar experience. And in those first, even in the first week, whenever it's on there, it's like, this is what food really does. And then all of a sudden you have to really kind of, kind of fine tune your diabetes management. But I mean, without that tool, you have no idea what's going on. And it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable what, what the Dexcom is capable of and what, in turn, you are capable of as a, as a person with diabetes managing yourself once you have that additional information. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is something very personal. Um, well, I know you wrote in your blog that uh, your girlfriend is also a type 1 uh, diabetic. Mm -hmm. But the first thing, the first question here is, uh, did you actually come across uh, or did you want to find someone or uh, your partner who is also a diabetic, or is it just a matter of coincidence that you both met? A determining factor in, in, in our relationship. It just so happened that diabetes wasn't a common, was a commonality. Um, it's it's just one of those things that you come to deal with. If for whatever reason I was dating somebody else, if I was really going to be dating them, they would have to accept me for me. My diabetes is a part of it, and just because she has diabetes doesn't mean that she would that she would necessarily have to understand what I'm going through. It just helps that she does, and she's going through, so it makes things a little bit easier at times. Um, obviously, it definitely makes it difficult at times, too, whenever I'm going through a low and she can't do anything except sit there and wait the 15 minutes, or she's having a low and I have to sit there and wait the 15 minutes. Those types of things are definitely tough, but I wouldn't say that, that having diabetes was a requirement for, for my girlfriend, but as I mentioned, it, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. So uh, the other question is, um, I think you're into more sports kind of thing, like you try to run so much or do mm -hmm. cycling and raise awareness and also participate in all these rides. So uh, the first question is, how helpful was it to you um, being diabetic? And also I think uh, recently you have done P90X or the home exercise or something like, so how, how did it help you? Um, well, the, the bike riding has been kind of on and off, honestly, just because of, of, of work and other things to kind of get in the way. I live right behind the bike trail, which is very convenient. Um, so once things, I mean, I'm still trying to get back into routine with some other, some other, you know, personal thing. But once that routine kind of settles down, I know that getting on the bike is going to be part of the routine. And it definitely helps just because it's not, I don't find it as stressful and as difficult as running. I mean, I've never, I mean, I, I ran a little bit in high school when I was playing tennis, but I've never been like a distance runner. Like I don't, I, at my peak, I could maybe handle two miles by myself. But other than that, running has never been that much fun. Being on a bike was, has always been a lot easier for me. Um, and as far as, I mean, just like diabetes management, I mean, I mean it's treated like anything else. You, you, you take the necessary precautions, keep glucose tablets or Gatorade or whatever around. I have the Dexcom near me. I travel with my meter, so that's fine. Um, so that really hasn't, I mean, there's nothing too out of the ordinary to consider, but it's also, I mean, I'm not riding for more than, the most I've ever ridden was 20 miles for Tour de Cure, but even then I'm stopping halfway through to test, and I have other people around, excuse me, I have other people around that are aware of what's going on. Um, P90X, that's a completely different animal. That thing, I, I'm pretty sure it cured my diabetes for a week. Whenever we did it, the only I did it for about a month or so, almost almost a month. And after the first week, uh, it, it was pretty incredible what what was going on. Like I actually had to lower my lantus for a little bit because my metabolism, everything else was kind of coming back into some kind of like a solid exercise state that um, it, was just really, it was just really strange that everything everything was working a lot better. As far as my body was concerned, and I didn't, I mean, my insulin requirements, I mean, were, were just dropping. And that's, and that's definitely natural. Like, I knew that, that as you exercise more and as other things are happening with your body, that insulin requirements are going to have to adjust for better or worse. And I know with exercise, it'll improve, or it'll, in, it'll improve for the better, which means you'll be taking less insulin. But I mean, there's definitely an adjustment period after those first, I guess, like that week long period is the initial, like, kind of buffer zone. After that, you kind of hit into a groove. Once I hit that groove, I didn't realize I was in the groove, so I was still taking the same type, the same amount of insulin for the same things. I was going low a lot often, but uh, if you can stick with the P90X or any kind of exercise routine, it's definitely beneficial. I mean, P90X specifically, just because you asked about it, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. I mean, the yoga was definitely, it was kicking me, though. It, that, that kind of stuff, I'm not flexible. I mean, you can't really do it sitting down, but my flexibility is, has never been a strong suit of mine, and trying to do yoga the first time, I, I wanted to jump out a window when I was done with that thing. It was so, bad. It was so rough. Uh, so I, I asked you that question because uh, Tony uh, from bloggingdiabetes.com, he was also trying P90X, so that's why I asked like whether, um, you know, since too many people are trying P90X, 
but that's good for any diabetic. Um, oh, it's 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 good for any person with diabetes. It's good for anybody that doesn't want to go to a gym and deal with like gym people or being stared at. Because I know, like especially women in general, they always have to deal with the fact that they're being women at a gym, and you're not going to be wearing. You know, it's not that you're wearing revealing clothing, but it's just you're. you're I, I understand that there's that stigma. There's that. There's an extra nonsense you have to go through. So something like that at home. When you're in the comfort of your home, P90X is definitely something for you. I wish I was getting a commission for this, but I'm not. But it's definitely something to look into. And even as a supplement for the gym, if you want to go to the gym and do a cardio routine or do more serious weights, but you can still supplement that with the P90X, it's definitely something to look into. I highly recommend it. Uh-huh, uh-huh.